Hey everyone, I'm Matt Dolan with Dolan Divorce Lawyers in Connecticut, and today what I'm going to talk about is how to file a motion to withdraw your appearance as an attorney. So basically how to ask the court's permission to no longer represent a client. So this video is mostly directed towards other attorneys, um, but if you, you know, you might find this video helpful if you find yourself in a situation where your attorney is trying to, you know, file his own motion to withdraw and no longer wants to represent you. And this can give you some insight into how to deal with that situation. So I'm going to share my screen to go over the relevant kind of rules. Um, <clears throat> so the rules of professional conduct, uh, rule 1.16, they lay out, you know, when an attorney has to decline or terminate representation. So it says that subsection A says, except as stated in subsection C below, a lawyer shall not represent a client or where representation has commenced shall withdraw from a representation of a client if. So these are scenarios where a lawyer is required to seek the termination of representation. One is the representation will result in violation of the rules of professional conduct or other law. <clears throat> Two, the lawyer's physical or mental condition materially impairs the lawyer's ability to represent the client. So basically, you know, if you something happens to you physically or mentally where you can't continue to represent a client sufficiently, you have to seek a withdrawal. Um, if the lawyer is discharged, so if a if a client fires a lawyer or um you know, if a lawyer suspended or something like that, they are required to no longer represent the client. Um, and then subsection B lays out situations where a lawyer may uh, withdraw their representation or seek, you know, seek permission to no longer represent a client. So withdrawal can be accomplished yeah, so you, you may withdraw when withdrawal can be accomplished without material adverse effect on the interests of the client. Um, the client persists in a course of action involving the lawyer's services that the lawyer reasonably believes is criminal or fraudulent. <clears throat> the client has used the lawyer's services to perpetuate a crime or fraud. The client can, and usually those are going to fall also fall under number one, which requires you to uh, no longer represent a client, the violating of rules of professional conduct. Um, but it's also included here in B. Uh, for a client insists upon taking action that the lawyer considers repugnant or with which the lawyer has a fundamental disagreement. So I don't know, in a custody case, if, a, if your client wants to do something like completely outrageous, you know, that you think would really hurt a child, then, um, you know, you can seek a, uh, you can seek to withdraw. <clears throat> uh, the client fails substantially to fulfill an obligation to the lawyer regarding the lawyer's services and has been given reasonable warning that the lawyer will withdraw unless the obligation is fulfilled. So usually that what that means is that they're not paying their bill. <laughs> so if, if your client's not paying your bill, you can withdraw. Um, but, but there might be other provisions within a retainer agreement that the client might not be fulfilling. Uh, the representation will result in an unreasonable financial burden on the lawyer or has been rendered unreasonably difficult <clears throat> by the client um, or other good cause for withdrawal exists. So those are the scenario, um, the scenarios in which you may seek a withdrawal. Um, so those are the rules of professional, professional conduct, which are relevant. Um, now, Section 3-10 kind of lays out what the motion to withdraw actually has to look like mechanically. Uh, I'm not going to go through the details of this. It kind of just lays out what has to be in the motion. I'd rather just show you a sample motion, but you're probably going to want to look at this. Section 3.10, uh, which, you know, which covers you know, the actual motion that has to be filed. So let's look through a sample. Um, <clears throat> so here's a sample motion to withdraw. So you, you know, obviously put the caption that you're, you know, it's a motion to, for permission to withdraw. And then, you know, the undersigned counsel pursuant to 3-10, which is this section I just showed you, the section on motions to withdraw, uh, hereby moves the court for 
permission to withdraw his appearance from the above reference matter. So, you know, these are some of the, you know, I don't need to go through every line of this, but you're going to need to insert your client's name and address um, that you mailed them a copy of the motion. And again, you're going to put the date that you mailed it. Um, you have to put the date on which either a trial or pre-trial is scheduled, or if none of that stuff has been scheduled, just put that they have not been scheduled. Uh, and then notice is attached. So, so that's the actual motion. You're going to want to put an order page on there. Um, certificate of cer certification of service. So you're going to want to put the name and address of your client, as well as any counsel or other parties of record. And then this is the actual notice. Um, so, you know, just basically copy this um, this form and, you know, you're going to need to customize the the date or no, the court will the court will fill this out. So you actually don't have to fill any of this in. You're going to file the motion and the court will fill in those dates. Obviously, you have to put your correct caption on here and make sure you have the correct courthouse. If, the, if this sample motion lists some other courthouse, um, just make sure you include you know, you put it for the court that you, you know, that your case is filed in. And a lot of this language is in that section 3-10. You know, it's, it requires that you provide the client with notice of certain things. And then this is another form, you know, that basically the court will fill out. You, you're going to want to make sure you put your client's name and their address and the correct courthouse, but the the court will fill in the blanks as far as when the hearing is to take place. Um, and again, make sure you have the correct <clears throat> court down here. So that's pretty much it as far as what the form should say. <clears throat> and that you're going to have to put a reason for why the communication between or for why you're seeking the withdrawal. Um, usually, you know, it'll say the communication between the client and counsel is completely broken down, but they might not have paid their bill. Um, you know, you don't want to get into too much detail here because you could run into the issue of, you know, kind of, you don't want to adversely impact your client by putting something in writing as far as certain important behavior, for example. You don't necessarily want to put that in the motion. Um, you know, when you have, you don't want to put the details when you have the actual hearing. You're going to want to more, you know, speak, you know, just the fact that, you know, communication is broken down between you and your client and stuff like that. Um, sometimes you're going to want to seek a um, a private meeting with a judge. So it's the mat you're you're going to request what's called the matzah hearing. So ma the matzah is the Supreme Court case from 1993, and it basically this is one of the summaries. So due process clause did not entitle client to evidentiary hearing on attorney's motion to withdraw since attorney reasonably believed that continued representation were, would require require breach of rules of professional conduct. Evidentiary hearing on factual underpinnings of attorney's affidavit would have been of little value given the attorney's reasonable belief that the client's proposed financial affidavit was perjurous or misleading and client and New York attorney were present at hearing on motion to withdraw and did not give any reason to question veracity of withdrawing attorney's affidavit. So you might want to require, you know, ask for a matza hearing where you're, you know, kind of in the, it's more of a sealed hearing where you're just with the judge and saying, listen, you know, listen, I reasonably believe that my ongoing representation would result in a breach of the rules of professional conduct and that you know that should be you know you don't necessarily have to get into the details that should be sufficient to allow an attorney to be out of the case so again you file this motion with the court shortly after it is filed the court should fill in the blanks on this motion um, and give you a court date after you have a court date you then file you know, you then arrange for your client to be served. You obviously have to send a copy to opposing counsel and any other parties of record, but you can serve the client via, I think you can serve them by certified mail, but we always try to just have a marshal serve them just so you know the service is done properly. So you have your client served a certain number of days in advance. I believe it's 12 days in advance. You have to have them served. And then you show up for the hearing and ask for the court's permission to 
uh, withdraw. Now, if you can, you know, if the client will ultimately agree to file an appearance in lieu of uh, yours, then you don't have to go through the whole motion to withdraw process. So, you know, it usually makes the most sense to try to get the client to voluntarily, you know, let you out of the case by filing their own appearance or getting a new attorney who files an appearance in lieu of yours. So you arrange service, then you have them, you have the hearing, and then hopefully, you know, hopefully if you're the attorney who's filed it, hopefully the judge will grant your motion to withdraw. So those are the basics. You can get a sample of this motion off of our website. It'll be saved on there under the video section. And if you have any other questions, as usual, feel free to contact our office at any time.